Giraffes, the animals with the really long necks. These fellows are distinguished even amongst their African cousins. Just look at those horns and prehensile tongue. And who could forget about that long neck? These features definitely make the giraffe an iconic mammal. Maybe it's this iconicness that makes them so popular with evolution teachers. And nowhere is this more apparent than in this drawing. This work of art portrays two competing theories of evolution side by side. Lamarckism's acquired characteristics versus Darwinism's natural selection. The two theories were in conflict throughout the 19th century, with many arguing for both sides. Today, one of those theories forms the core concept of our most modern understanding of evolution, natural selection. On the subject of giraffes, Darwin wrote, Of the many giraffes, it was those whose necks were long enough to reach the highest of leaves that survived during harsh times. So, the surviving giraffes passed on their long necks trait to modern giraffes. Okay, let's stop there for a moment. What you've just heard, we assume lots of people have heard. The reason giraffe necks are so long. We'd like to point out an issue with this story today. Nothing going against science, though. No need to worry about that. <laughs> So we ask the question, did giraffe's necks really grow so long just to eat? That said, our giraffe neck roller coaster ride begins now. Buckle up. <laughs> Professor Robert Simmons presented this diagram to show that giraffes didn't grow long necks just to reach higher branches. The data presented here shows a distribution of feeding heights for male and female giraffes. Taking a look at the data, we can see that most feeding didn't occur at their maximum neck length. Professor Simmons pointed this out to show that giraffes didn't evolve longer necks simply to reach higher morsels of vegetation. In truth, the debate about why giraffe necks are so long has been going on for quite some time. In 1949, a journalist named Chapman Pincher, who majored in zoology, published a paper in Nature with a fresh take on the giraffe's neck debate. The giraffe's neck grew longer to drink water better. Chapman drew attention to the giraffe's legs. Longer legs seems like a trait that evolved to help the giraffe avoid predators. But as they got longer, the giraffe ran into the problem of not being able to reach down with its neck to get a drink. Thus, the giraffe was pressured into lengthening its neck as a solution. However, this theory doesn't hold for long before being utterly obliterated. This is due to the discovery of a Samotherium major fossil, a giraffe ancestor in 1970. Samotherium major had legs as long as the giraffe, but with a neck only spanning one meter in length. Have that of modern giraffes. Biologists considered that Samotherium major thrived with this physique for around six million years, until one million years ago. The giraffe's neck began elongated. It didn't make much sense to say that a thriving creature with long legs but a short neck would have evolved a longer neck because it had trouble drinking water. This was the nail in the coffin. Soon after this episode, our friend Professor Simmons returned with a new theory, sexual selection. Even now, male giraffes fight for dominance over females in intense necking bouts. The giraffes with the longer necks and heavier heads can deliver more powerful wablams to their opponents, kind of like with a hammer. The male giraffes who win these necking battles are chosen by the females. And so the giraffes evolved even longer necks, Professor Simmons explains. The giraffe's long neck is almost like the peacock's artsy tail. However, as some of you may have pointed out, this theory doesn't explain why female giraffes have long necks too. And in many cases, traits that are developed for sexual selection are sexually dimorphic. The different sexes have different bodies. What do you know? In 2009, Professor Mitchell published a paper refuting the sexual selection theory. While Professor Simmons had pointed out that male giraffe necks are longer than females, Mitchell's paper responded as such. Good luck, sir. Look at this graph. I'm telling you, there's no difference in neck length between giraffe males and females. In fact, with the biggest of the females, the neck grows longer than the males. <sighs> then why did these necks grow so long? 
Wait, is that a twist I smell on the horizon? Another theory has entered the academic space. Hmm, I wonder if anyone's anticipated this one. It's the thermal regulation theory. <laughs> In the year 2017, Professor Mitchell proposed that giraffes could use their long legs and necks to release heat more easily than other animals. He and a team of researchers divided the giraffe into different areas, then measured the surface areas of 60 specimens, 30 from each sex. Including teenagers, the study measured surface areas ranging from 2 to 12.4 meters squared. And when taking weight into consideration, for each kilogram of weight, the younger giraffes had around 145 centimeters squared of surface area, while the adults had less, around 90 centimeters squared. However, the conclusion the researchers made about the giraffe's surface area was, this isn't much different from a lot of other animals. Wait, what? What do you mean? If you said that the giraffe's long necks are for thermal regulation, then say that its surface area is nothing special, what should we do? But the researchers mentioned this to show that the surface area was less important than what the giraffes actually did, point their necks toward the sun. By pointing their long necks toward the sun, the giraffes are able to cloak their bodies in shadow, cooling their bodies more quickly and enabling efficient thermoregulation. For example, if we were to take a lengthy chopstick and stick a ball on one end, then point the ball toward a nearby light source, we can see that the ball shades the rest of the chopstick. And we have some real-world data to support this. 35% of giraffes in Estosia National Park have been observed pointing their heads toward the sun in 20 degrees Celsius weather, a figure that rises to 60% for temperatures around 37 degrees Celsius. In addition, the research team mentioned that the short diameter of the giraffe's legs, as well as the sweat glands on their necks and ankles, help them beat the heat. Unfortunately, we don't yet have a clear answer as to how the giraffe's neck grew so long though we've learned about their dietary, mating, and thermoregulatory characteristics. Biologists are still researching and debating the issue. Anyway, I'm sorry we couldn't come to a more satisfying conclusion, dear viewer. But personally, this is one of the many reasons that I love science. This process of research and more research, striving forward to reach an objective and sound solution. Isn't this process of scientific discovery just amazing? And through this process, our perspective of the natural world can grow deeper and wider, gaining new dimension. So that's why science is a window to the world, isn't it? And this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.